We have a number of treatment options for MS and they really cover a very wide breadth. So we have the needle injectables, the interferon betas and glutarum acetate that go back to the 1990s. So if somebody wants a treatment that has had sufficient human pregnancy exposures to be able to say they're safe and you know exactly what you're getting and you have 20, 25 plus year data, those are still options. We now have the orals that date to 2010 to 2012 that avoid the needle injectable that have efficacy as good or perhaps even a little bit better than the needle injectables. Each of them has pros and cons, but they're um, very good, reasonable options. And then we have the monoclonal infusions that are the high efficacy, but typically somewhat higher risk. Uh, but if you have somebody that has very active MS and a very poor prognostic profile, you really want to probably emphasize efficacy as a good option. And I think trials are ongoing that are looking at the concept of should we be using aggressive high efficacy treatments early in everybody or should it only be a subset that seem to require it. So I don't think there's one major disease modifying therapy. I really don't. Among the needle injectables, uh, glutarum acetate is one of the more popular because it doesn't require any blood monitoring whatsoever and because it has absolutely the highest pregnancy exposure and seems to be completely safe. Um, I think people feel comfortable using the orals. They've been used in a lot of individuals. There are refinements in some of the orals that are coming. These are currently in testing so-called second generation uh, drugs. With regard to the monoclonals, I think the biggest stumbling block, their high efficacy, very convenient, you have guaranteed adherence. The stumbling block has been the adverse effects. The newest monoclonal, the anti-CD20, is the only one that doesn't have a REMS program in place. So I think that that's an agent that is going to become more and more popular.